Wow, are you excited? Yes. Yes. Bring baby Lala. Wow, yes. you're all ready. Where? Do you know where we are going? Sydney. Unvaccinated kids below 12 can now travel under the vaccinated travel lane or VTL scheme. According to one leading travel agency in Singapore, Dynasty Travel, families with children under 12 make up 15% of travel bookings this December school holidays. But infection rates are surging in many of these VTL countries. Europe became the epicenter of the pandemic again in November with more than 2.8 million new COVID-19 cases reported in a week, the highest since the start of the pandemic. Then came this. Reports emerge of a new COVID-19 variant that could be more contagious than the Delta strain. Prompting several countries to heighten restrictions. So in this episode, I want to find out what it's like to go on vacation with young children under the age of 12 who are not vaccinated and to find out if it's worth your time effort and money. And I'm not doing it alone. Guess what? I'm going on vacation with the Ong family. Hey guys! Hey. But I didn't come unprepared. Two weeks before this trip, I met with paediatric infectious diseases consultant Dr Olivia Liao. So should unvaccinated kids be travelling on VTLs at all? If the infection rates are higher than in Singapore, um, the risk is already higher for vaccinated adults, even more so for children who are unvaccinated. So if there is still that risk, then actually why do we allow children to be travelling on this VTL? What we have seen locally is that the unvaccinated children less than 12 do recover as quickly as vaccinated adults. So that might be one reason why we are comfortable treating them similarly to the vaccinated adult group. So based on the information we have now, would there be certain countries that I should think twice about going to? At the moment, the European countries, places like Netherlands, yeah. Germany, have case rates that are really high above and beyond Singapore's rates. I would choose a lower risk setting, so like a summer country uh, with lots of outdoors, because viruses tend to survive better in the cold. What kind of added precautions do you think a family should take if they need to travel with their unvaccinated children? So getting the flu shots two weeks before travel would be good. For children more than six months old, are all eligible for flu shots. Then having an ART kit is always handy, as well as medications for uh, symptoms that we may have. Before the Ong family heads off to Sydney, there's one hurdle they need to clear. A PCR test taken within 72 hours before departure. Oh, is this your first time doing the test? Yeah, first time. For all of you? Yeah. Some travel agencies like Dynasty Travel offer home PCR tests for convenience. All done! Luckily for Giselle, under Australia's requirements, children under the age of five are not required to take a PCR test before departing. OK, go for it. You okay? Better? Oh. <coughs> See, I'm crying too. We did it! Now we can go on holiday. From 28th November, travellers to New South Wales, where Sydney is located, need to take at least four PCR tests both in Sydney and Singapore. 72 hours before departing from Singapore, within 24 hours upon arrival in Sydney, on the sixth day, a PCR or ART test within 48 hours before departing Sydney, and a final PCR test back home at the airport in Singapore. Since 3rd December, travellers also need to take daily ART tests in Singapore for seven days. Tests on day three and seven must be professionally administered. What were some of the concerns you guys had while planning for this trip? Because both of your kids are unvaccinated. 
For Sydney, should be relatively safe because the cases is quite low as compared to Singapore. Okay. But in terms of the airplane, we are more concerned oh. because it's a confined place and then eight hours of flight, uh, you uh. know, and we have to mask on. So one of the concerns that we had was also making sure that the travel insurance do cover us mm -hmm. for especially the COVID situation. For certain plans, the kids actually got lesser coverage. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Also, one of the Concern that I had was the quarantine allowance. Let's say any one of us mm. is going to be quarantined, which happens like four of us, right? Correct. So the expenses for quarantine facility might go up. So this can help to offset the bill a little bit. And how much did this policy cost you? Oh, the family of four is 176. And what do you want to do when you are in Sydney? I want to see Koala Bear. Ooh. I want to go to the big swimming pool and surf. And surf? I want to make a sandcastle. Wow! So you guys have it all planned already? Yes! After weeks of planning, the Ongs are finally heading down under. The cost of their VTL flight? 3,700 Singapore dollars for the family of four, about the same as the cost of pre-pandemic. We're oh, up in the sky already. It's the first day of VTL flights from Singapore to Australia. And our flight to Sydney is about 50% full. So for Singapore Airlines, the children under six years old don't have to wear masks, but for extra precaution, we decided that she should put it on. Except for meal times, we were a bit concerned if they can put on the mask for such a prolonged hours. Spray your hands again. All travellers are required to submit a travel declaration form prior, where proof of vaccination, trip information and travel history are uploaded. With that, clearing customs was smooth and we are done in less than 15 minutes. You do need to do a PCR test on arrival, but here's the catch. You don't have to do it right away, as long as you do it within 24 hours. So we're going to do ours tomorrow. So similar to what I experienced in Munich, there's no need to wear a mask outdoors here. But how safe is it really for unvaccinated kids to go maskless in Sydney? I'm on a quarantine-free vacation in Sydney, Australia with the Ong family who are travelling with their unvaccinated kids. From 28th November, all travellers are required to isolate for 72 hours upon arrival. But since we arrived before then, our itinerary can go on as planned. Hi, good morning, guys. Hi. Good morning. Michael's been showing tourists around Sydney for 15 years. And pre-pandemic, Singaporeans were one of his main clients. Before we enter to the restaurant, we need to do the check-in first. So we have the apps called Service News How Well. You can download from Apple Store or the Android system. Just tap in, scan it, continue. You can add dependent. Okay, the menu, Andrew, okay. mind to show your vaccination proof? Oh yeah, please? okay. Thank this you. one work too? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Vaccinated perfect. Yeah, so actually I showed her my Trace Together app. She yeah. showed the vaccine cert. Yeah. And they were both recognized. Right? Yeah. Now we can take off our mask. Yeah. <laughs> if you go inside of the building, you need to wear a mask for the adult, such as like public transport, shopping mall. 
What about the children? Uh, if the children under 12 years old, if the company with the family is fully vaccinated, they don't need to wear a mask anywhere. Even yes. like inside the building, yes. restaurant, museum? Yeah. Are there any other rules about dining together? There's no limit if you are a friends or family sit together. The restaurant owner just need to obey one rule, two square meters rule. For example, they, if they have 100 square meters, yeah. uh, they only can allow say 50 people. Uh, but otherwise we can have a table of, yep. like now it's 6, 10, 10 15, 15 yep. 20, yep. 30. <laughs> we all miss having large gatherings, gatherings in Singapore. Yep. Relaxation of rules in several Australian states kicked in when infection cases fell in October after months of lockdown. But as the most populous states, Victoria and New South Wales, where Sydney is located, account for almost all, some 97% of the country's total number of infections. Why then are these the only two states that have reopened its borders to international travellers? I'm here to get some answers from the Minister of Tourism for New South Wales. He's one of the key people to strongly support the reopening of international borders. New South Wales and Victoria actually have the highest infection rate. So why did you still decide to open these two areas? We've got incredibly high rates of vaccination. So here in New South Wales, we're around 93% okay. fully vaccinated. And we've already started our third dose booster program. So that's giving a uh, substantial amount of coverage. Any kid under the age of 12 doesn't have to wear a mask indoors or outdoors. Why are you so comfortable doing that? We know that younger people make up a, a higher proportion of our rate of infection, but that level of infection is very low. It's less than 200 a day. So that, that's the infection rate for, for kids under the age of 12? That's okay. the infection rate for the entire state. Ah, OK, yeah. even better. And it's a milder disease on, on younger people. And what would be these key sources of transmission for unvaccinated kids? For young people under 12, the primary location where transmission yeah. seems to be taking place is in our school settings. For <laughs> travellers coming in from Singapore, you're not likely to be in a location where spread is highly likely. While it's not compulsory for kids under six to wear a mask in Singapore, it's still unusual to see kids this young go without masks back home. But I've learned that as of 9th December, there hasn't been a single life lost to COVID-19 for children under the age of 12 in New South Wales. So we're just on our way to get a PCR test and I hear it's super convenient here. I mean, it's literally like getting takeout food because it is actually a drive through And the best thing about it, arrival PCR tests are free for travellers in Sydney. Hi. And it's a throat plus nose swab in Sydney. Oh. Oh, oh. One, two, three, four. Oh, that's it, five seconds. This time, there's no escape for four year old Giselle. Don't move your head, okay? Your mission is to stay still. All okay. good. You ready? I'm gonna tickle your throat, okay? A little bit. A little tickles. Okay, open your mouth wide. Okay. Okay. All oh, good. Good job. One, two, three, Good job. Well done. Oh, yeah. nice. He's Let's so go. brave. Test results typically come in through text and email within 24 hours. And we're allowed to go about our normal activities as we wait for the results. Oh yeah, this is what we're here for. Fish and chips, woohoo! I'm back in my hotel uh, about four hours since I took my PCR test. Just got the results. Thankfully, I'm negative. With our mandatory PCR test out of the way, the Ongs decide to check out... Do you guys go to the beach quite often in Singapore? Yeah. yeah. So back in Singapore, when the kids go to the beach together with you, do you make them wear a mask as well? Mm, mm -hmm. yep. yep. So why were you comfortable letting them go without a mask here? Other than the regulation, uh, I think it's pretty crowded in Singapore. Okay. Uh, a lot more people, but the space here is much bigger. So life is almost back to normal for the kids in Sydney. But... Is that the case for all attractions? I want to see koala. There are a few animals that are susceptible to catching COVID from humans.
It's been six days since the Ong family started their holiday in Sydney, Australia. Where are we going, Giselle? Taronga Zoo is Sydney's largest zoo and is home to more than 5,000 animals from over 350 different species. Visitors have to pre-book their tickets online, unlike pre-COVID times. It's actually really not very crowded at all. That's because school holidays have not yet started in Sydney. And since the Australia VTL is only open to Singapore and New Zealand tourists for now, we came across very few international travellers. Welcome to Free Fly Birds. Whoa! That was new. <laughs> yeah. See these white stickers here? Ah. Actually, they're there so that households can sit together and they're 1.5 metres apart. I see. But actually, I don't think it makes a difference, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is like our own private show. Yeah. <laughs> the safe distancing measures at live shows here are akin to the rules in Singapore. Except at the Singapore Zoo, the number of children 12 and below at live shows is capped at 20%. There's no such limit here. Not a lot has changed. We are a 28 hectare site, so very large, very open. We could have a large group of people safely on the site. So you're saying everything else is back to pre-COVID days? Some of our um, encounters, we have a, a slightly smaller number of people at any time so that people can safe distance. A lot of families with young children love to come to the zoo, get up close with the animals. Are they all available for that kind of close interaction? Yes, they are, especially our Australian animals. So yeah. koalas, kangaroos, wallabies, they're all available to get up close to. There's just one species that there's some changes with and that's the meerkats because okay because they are susceptible to COVID transmission, so we're just making sure that people aren't that close to them at the moment. This is the moment the kids have been waiting for. Oh, he's moving. I see the baby koala. Oh, oh, wow. He's looking at the camera going, this is my good side. I must say the last seven days have been something I really miss. Travelling as a family. Is this your first time on a horse? Yes. Then on our final day in Sydney, came an announcement so swift, it literally jolted us all back to reality. Fully vaccinated Singaporeans can still fly into Australia, but they will have to be isolated for three days when they arrive. Also on fears over the Omicron variant. It signalled the spread of a newly discovered and potentially more contagious COVID-19 variant, Omicron. I think we are glad to be going back to Singapore today. So just concerned about whether Singapore site will have more tighter measures, whether we will need to be isolated and things like that. Before we return to Singapore, we have another COVID-19 test to take. This is one of the centres at the airport where you can do either an ART or a PCR test. There we go. Which country are you flying to? To Singapore. There's an RT-PCR swap, which is $79. And there's also a rapid antigen, which is $59. You can have either option. RT-PCR takes an hour and a half for the results. Rapid antigen takes in between 30 minutes to come. OK. This is the third test we have to take. And travellers returning to Singapore from New South Wales, Australia, can take an ART test or a PCR test 48 hours before departing. The ART is less invasive, which comes as a relief for the kids. So what happens if I test positive? If you test positive, then we have to notify the public health unit straight away. Do I know exactly where I'll be going? Whether it's a hotel, can I self-isolate? No, so that will be up to the public health unit. And how soon will I know whether I can go back to Singapore? It depends until you return a, a negative test. Yep. So that can be uh, within a couple of weeks. If it's longer, it's mostly going to be because you're quite ill. Right. In that case, probably you'd be transferred to a hospital. And who would have to pay for that quarantine? That is up to the travellers to pay for that quarantine. And 
for the testing, will that also be covered? So testing through your time in yep. hotel quarantine is covered by the state. So that, that's free for, for the travellers. So less than half an hour, my results have come in and I'm good to go. I'm negative. Back in Singapore, we'll have to do one last PCR test at the airport. Then it's back to isolating at home until we receive a negative test result. And we have gotten our PCR test result. The result is negative. I'm going to check in with the Ongs for one final word with them. Hi guys! Hi. What did you guys think of the whole trip? How was it? Hey, you're missing Sydney already. The weather especially. I think we kind of miss the days that we don't have to wear masks outdoor. Okay. So was there a time when you were worried for the safety of the kids? There was this part where we went to a shopping mall. It was pretty crowded. We decided to get the kids masks up. Other than that, the place is uh, a lot less people. And what would you say to people who said you were exposing your kid to risk by letting them travel during this pandemic? In Singapore, the kids get very fussy when they are outdoor with the mask on. Ooh. So we tend to go indoor with the aircon and everything. But then everywhere we go is very crowded. I mean, in Sydney, we are mostly outdoor. So Giselle and Jarius, what do you miss about being on holiday in Sydney? Surfing, surfing, surfing. And the cola and the luna pie. I enjoy seeing the kids enjoying themselves, really. You can't get the experience in Singapore. And would you still travel to Sydney with the kids if you had to isolate for 72 hours? I think it's hard for families because to isolate in a hotel and to entertain the kid for three days <laughs> is not so easy. <laughs> So Giselle and Jarius, do you want to go on holiday again? Yes, 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 yes. Yes? You know, taking a family vacation during a pandemic can be tedious and costly too. The Ongs spend about an extra $5,000 on COVID-19 related expenses. Things like swap tests, travel insurance, VTL flights. But most of all, there's the uncertainty in travel restrictions and health risks. Who knows what new variant might come about next? But then again, seeing how much Giselle and Jarius enjoyed their time in Sydney, I'm reminded of the precious times I had travelling with my own family. So I'm glad that they still have that option to do so, in spite of COVID-19.